Okay, I'm going to do a new tutorial today. I'm Rob Snow, by the way. I um, had one request to remove me floating around in the bottom corner, so I'm occasionally I'll come in and out. Uh, I'm going to keep it to start with because I want to basically have some kind of control over the videos. I don't want people to share them and not uh, credit me for it. So anyway, uh, I'm on my new uh, iMac as well, 27-inch, so you'll notice everything's a little bit bigger. Anyway, I'm going to do a new tour tutorial today I'm going to show you how to do the Bocce effect again not my own uh, invention this has been around for a while I just uh, read a tutorial and I want to show you how to actually make it happen in Photoshop using a video to show you okay let's get rid of that to start I don't need that open right, I'm just going to show you what the effect is going to be we're going to end up with basically this yeah You've probably seen this before in photographs where things are shining from behind if you've got a person standing in front of a lot of lights from a city, for instance. You tend to get this effect. Uh, it's called bocce. Okay. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do this uh, using Photoshop. It's relatively easy, and once you've set it up, you can uh, repeat this whole effect, do different shapes, hearts, squares, diamonds, whatever. This is the standard one using circles, which is what you tend to see a lot of because lights give this circle effect. Okay, it's a bit similar to that effect you get in movies when uh, there's a uh, rain on the window and then they f and put the uh, put the camera slightly out of focus and the cars are coming towards you. Yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this. Close it. Make a new document. Right, that's a bit too big. I'm going to make it say 5,000 pixels. Whilst I'm here, I'll just explain that this resolution thing, if you're going to do it for screen, you don't need to have it on 300. It can be 72, but just for this purpose, I'm going to actually uh, keep it to 300. Uh, one of the things I do is I try to get things uh, prepared for print um, websites and things like that, so I tend to keep it at a high resolution. Sometimes I even go to 600. Anyway, I'm just going to quickly name it. Okay, there's my document. First things first, we don't need white, we need a grey, very dark grey. So, what we're going to have to do is, if you notice, one of my, all my palettes jumped down here. You, know, you notice it's on black at the moment, so we just want it around about here. So, you can see an obviously slight difference between the black and the grey, but not too much. Okay, then I'm just going to fill this. Okay, it looks like it's black at the moment, but it is grey. Well, I can show you how that works in a minute. Anyway, next thing we need to do is define our brush that we're going to use. Okay, for that we need to actually then create a new uh, layer. I'm going to hide the background layer temporarily whilst we make this brush. I'm going to get the ellipse tool and then holding down the uh, shift, I'm going to proportionally scale it. See if we can find one there. It's really hard on this iMac to see the marquee sometimes. But I'm going to make it a reasonable size, say about that big. Yeah, can you see the marquee? I'm just going to move it to the middle so you can see it. And I'm going to just literally fill that with black. Okay. Not grey, black. Okay, so slightly different to the one we had before. That's going to be the starting point for our brush. Okay. Now what we need to do is to adjust this slightly. I'm going to open up the uh, effects palette. I'll put that in the middle as well. Okay, now on the first top one where it says blending options, it's got the default. What we need to do is change the opacity slightly. My best if I can see the actual effect it's going to do. Yeah. Now instead of using this one, which is actually going to change it to the whole object. Yeah. Because we actually have to do something later on. We don't want to deform the actual effect we add to the outside, which is to create a stroke. So this is going to affect that. So what we need is go to the one below it where it says advanced blending fill option opacity. Okay, and then change that to 50. Okay, like so. Now once that's done, if we go to stroke now, what you'll notice is the stroke appears and it's still the same opacity as the when we started, which is 100%. First of all, we need to change this to inside. Okay, because we're going to make a brush out of the actual effect. Okay. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger and it just needs to be roughly that kind of proportion. So it just gives a slight rim effect to the uh, circle, like so. Okay, you notice it's solid. Press OK. Right, 
that's our brush starting point. Uh, luckily I've got it selected already, but if I deselect it, what you can do is if you press command on the actual image, it reselects your object that's on that layer. Okay, that's this little box here. Okay, now what we need to do is to make this into a brush, and the way to do this is under the edit option, it says define brush presets. Now you'll notice it tells you the brush size we have, which is useful because uh, basically we need to find that later in our brush palette. Okay, and we need to call it Bucky. I've done all some already, so I'm going to have to name them according to the amount I've done. Press OK, and basically that's the brush done, so I'm going to throw that away. We'll go back to our background, which automatically appears again. Okay, I'm going to deselect the marquee. Right, what we need to do now is to create a gradient. Okay, now there's two ways to do this. We can actually do it on the grey or we can do it on the layer above it. And I tend to like doing it on the layer above because we can always keep the grey solid and then basically re add uh, new gradients whenever we need them. Okay, so what we can do now is go to our gradient tool. You'll notice we have a selection of already pre defined kind of strange hippie type uh, <laughs> gradients, yeah, all weird colours and things, okay, like this one, yeah, you can use that one or you can basically you make a new one, now let's try and do something different, I'm going to make a new one, okay, so what I'm going to do is just uh, alter some of these, make sure they're kind of, you see, what we're going to try and avoid is to make that blue, the more glow they have, the better it's going to have as well for the bulky effect. We want to try and make it so that the differences in between the colours are quite extreme. Like that, so he's going light, dark, tone. This is going to be light. I'm going to make this into a more bluey grey, green. Yeah, which gives a contrast between the, this one, which is going to be a kind of a, hopefully a bright red. So, yeah. You see, you've got a kind of setup. Make sure they're roughly evenly placed. Okay, you can do that accurately by putting 25% in here or something. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to do it at. Uh, I'm just going to do a strange angle. Like so. Yeesh, I need more yellow, I think. So what I want to want to do is to make it. Make oops, it's too much yellow. Now. That's okay. Now, so what we're going to do is leave it at that, uh, and also what we need to do is to put it into multiply mode. Okay, you'll notice it doesn't actually show us a gradient then. Don't fear. Okay, what we're going to do now is create the actual bulky effect, which would uh, do some magic for you to watch and understand. So what we first need to do is to create a, a group. Okay, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to call that bulky. Let's see. And before I do anything else, I'm actually going to put this onto color dodge, like so. I'm going to create a new layer. Okay, now we've got a brush palette. Okay, you notice know, something selectable, even though this is the one I've just made. Okay, uh, because basically I've got the brush selected, so you have to first select your brush. Okay, you notice know, everything becomes highlightable. I'm going to select this brush I've just made, and now if I go to this palette here, it is selected because it's there, it's in a block, okay, you can tell because it says 776 if you remember. Okay, and what we've got to do is adjust some of this because you notice it's just set up as a normal brush at the moment. So what we need to do first is to change this, okay, the size. What that's got to be is uh, as it is, but then the spacing, you notice it's basically overlapping, we've got to make it so that they're individual. That's very important. So what we've got to do there is to define it so it's at hundred percent. Okay, you notice they're all butting up next to each other then. Okay. This means that they won't give that blending option that you do when you're using a normal brush. Okay. Got something on my ear something. Okay, and then we're gonna to move to the shape dynamic option. All right, so you notice it instantly has changed it to do this. Okay, now for instance what we've got to do now. I've got to make sure I select it because it's going to be staying on there. We're going to change all these options now to. Uh, these are all basically set from when I did it before. So if they're not these, these are the ones you have to have. <laughs> I should have done it from scratch so I didn't have them. But basically, you need to have it 100 pen pressure. That's if you've got a 
uh, stylus pen used for a Wacom. Okay, if you don't, don't have the pen pressure selected. Minimum diameter 50. Okay, and everything else is off or zero. Okay, and then we've got what we've got to do is move to scatter. Okay, you notice it's changed again. And what we've got to do is make sure they're on both axes and uh, 1000. You can do that by just literally, you see what the difference is. It scatters it quite a lot. Okay, but just pull your thing all the way over from where it's probably around there and just pull it all the way over there. Controls off, uh, count up to five, and count jitter one percent, and then make sure control is off. Now the last thing you need to change, which I have to tell you, it doesn't appear in CS5. This is why it got confusing when I read the uh, the tutorial before. Uh, they've changed the name of it. It used to be called uh, other uh, dynamics, but it's also actually called now. It's called transfer. So you have to click on this one. Okay. And then make sure all these are set to 50% off, okay, and flow jitter needs to be 50%. Next, uh, and then the next thing has to be on pen pressure, okay. Yeah, you notice it shows the difference between them. That just gives you a little different depth with the uh, glow that they give from the actual uh, gradient that we put on it before. Okay, that's basically everything set up for the brush. And if we close that now, make sure our layers are selected. You notice my brush is ready. The last thing we need to do is to literally change the brush to white. It doesn't work if it's unless it's white. Okay, now I'm going to put my mouse away and take my uh, take my pen. Okay, now this is just a relatively cheap Wacom uh, tablet. Uh, 80 euros, I think it was when I bought it, and uh, but it's fantastic. And it does have that thing, which is especially with the latest drivers, uh, which is pen pressure. Okay, so the, depending on the amount you press on the actual nib, it basically gives the quality of the uh, like a if you've used a real uh, if you used a real airbrush, you understand giving it different kind of qualities of depth and uh, whatever. So anyway, all you need to do with your brush now selected is to literally paint yeah you may want to do it several times to give coverage okay but you notice what's happening they're basically slowly building up circles and when they overlap they get a little bit brighter okay which is how it would work okay now another thing we need to do is to go to our blur this is the background layer so we'll go to Gaussian blur and we need to drop this down to round about 20 it depends on your document size though because that doesn't look that pretty I need to go between not being able to see the edging to being able to see, and if it was on 20, the edging disappears almost completely, so I'm going to bring it in between 15 and 20, and you can see a little bit of the edge coming in. Press OK, make a new layer. All right, now you can, if you want to, just play with the uh, brush size. OK, like so. Now again we must need to change and do the blur. Now this time you want to bring it up quite high amount so you can see this, uh, the uh, edging on the spheres like so. And finally in one last layer and you just basically do all this until you're happy with the effect. Yeah, and then just do the final Gaussian blur and put that around about two so it's done it enough to blur the edging and sharpness of that and then press OK. And that basically is how you do a bocce effect inside Photoshop. Okay, the important thing is the setting up of the brush. What you've got to do is play with the uh, gradients. Okay, I don't know whether it'll do anything different if I do. do you, know, you see that's gone terrible. That's gone completely, yeah. So there may be different. Okay. So you can get different effects using the different. That's quite nice. That's on overlay, okay. Which is probably the better version instead of multiply, okay. But again, it depends on the effect you want, okay. That's kind of like a very strong 
lit view. So uh, if you want my recommendations, you can choose between uh, multiply if you want subtle effect and overlay if you want to give that more natural bocky effect. Okay, that's on your gradient layer. And uh, as I said, it's very important how you deal with your uh, your uh, gradient, uh, the color setup, the angles, and everything. Okay, but that's how you do it basically. That's a bocky effect.